what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel look at this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the value of x for which x over 2 all raised to the power of 6 is equal to 3 to the 6. well our first step will be for us to apply the law of indices to the left hand side the law of indices that we're going to be applying is for example when i have a over b all raised to the n this is equal to a to the n all over b to the n so let's apply this law of indices to what we have here so this expression becomes x to the 6 all over 2 to the 6. And this is equal to 3 to the 6. Our next step will be for us to cross multiply. And before I do that, I'm going to be putting over 1 here. So when I cross multiply, x to the 6 times 1 is x to the 6 equal to now 2 to the 6 times 3 to the 6 i write it this way 2 to the 6 times 3 to the 6. our next step will be for us to apply yet another law of indices which says for example when i have a to the n times b to the n as long as they have a common power the law of indices says we can group them together to be a times b all raised to the n so let's write this in this form so we have x to the 6 to be equal to so this becomes 2 times 3 all raised to the common power 6 now our next step will be for us to simplify what we have inside of this bracket so that we have x to the 6 to be equal to 2 times 3 is 6 and this is raised to the 6. Our next step will be for us to move 6 to the 6 to the left hand side so that we have x to the 6 our 6 to the 6 move to the left and becomes negative 6 to the 6 and this is equal to 0 well x to the 6 can be written as x cube raised to the power of 2 minus 6 to the 6 can be written the same way as 6 cube raised to the power of 2 and this is equal to 0. well the reason that i do this is because from indices powers multiply so 3 times 2 will give back 6. now notice that we have difference of two squares on the left hand side and difference of two squares has property of let's say for example i have a squared minus b squared which is difference of two squares this is equal to a plus b times a minus b so let's apply this to what we have here so when we compare what we have to this property you notice that x cube is the same as a and 6 cube is the same as b so let's write this in this form so we have a a is representing x cube plus b plus b is representing 6 cube times a representing x cube minus b is representing 6 cube and this is equal to zero so we have two cases we have x cube plus 6 cube to be equal to zero 
or we have x cube minus 6 cube to be equal to 0. We're going to be solving these cases one after the other. So let's say for case 1, case 1, case 1 is where we have this x cube plus 6 cube to be equal to 0. Well, what we have on the left hand side is in the form of sum of two cubes, which has a property of, for example, when I have a cube plus b cube, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So we're going to be writing this in terms of this. So let's do that. But before that, let's recognize that x is represented as a and 6 is represented as b. So this becomes a plus b, that's x plus 6, times a squared, that's x squared, minus ab, that's x times 6, means 6x, plus b squared, which is 6 squared is 36. And this is equal to 0. So we have two cases here. We have x plus 6 to be equal to 0. Or we have this other case, which is x squared minus 6x plus 36 to be equal to 0. We can just get one of the values for x from here, from this first case, by moving 6 to the right hand side. And when we do that, x will be equal to, as 6 crosses to the right, it becomes negative 6. So we're going to be solving our second case on the next slide. Well, on this case, you see that we have a quadratic equation. And we're going to be using the general formula to solve this. So from here, we see that a is equal to 1. That's the coefficient of x squared. b is equal to negative 6. That's the coefficient of x. And the constant term is 36. So the general formula is, which is the quadratic formula, is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So let's substitute into our quadratic formula. So we have x to be equal to negative b, that's negative b is negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's negative 6 squared, minus 4a, what is a? a is 1, and c, c is 36, all over 2a, that's 2 times 1. So this simplifies into x equal to the negative times negative results to positive 6 plus or minus the square root of now negative 6 squared is 36 minus now 4 times 1 times 36 is 144 all over 2 times 1 is 2. Now this simplifies into x equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of now 36 minus 144 is negative 108 all over 2. Our next step will be for us to break down negative 108 such that one of the factors will be a perfect square. So we have x to be equal to 6 plus or minus. Now, the square root of negative 108 is same as the square root of 36. Remember, 36 is a perfect square times the square root of 3. So the square root of 36 times the square root of 3 gives the square root of 108. 
but I have negative, so I'm going to be multiplying by square root of negative 1. So all over 2. So this becomes x equal to 6 plus or minus. Now the square root of 36 is 6 times root 3. Now the square root of negative 1 is i, so times i, all over 2. Now notice that 6 is common on the numerator, so we have x to be equal to. Now factor out 6, we have 6 divided by 6, we're going to be having 1 plus or minus 6 root 3i divided by 6 is root 3 times i all over 2. Uh, 2 here 1, 2 here is what? 3. So we have x to be equal to, now opening the bracket, 3 times 1 is 3 plus or minus 3 times 3 3 times root 3i is 3 root 3i. So we have two solutions for x here. Now let's move on to our second case. Let me show you real quick. Here is our second case. Remember, we've done our first case, which is x cubed plus 6 cubed equal to 0. Now let's focus on the second case. Let's do that. On the following slide. So for our case 2, we have something like the difference of two cubes. The difference of two cubes has a property, for example, of a cube minus b cube. This is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. Now our x is in the form of a, our 6 is in the form of b. So let's write this in this form. So we have a minus b, that's x minus 6, times a squared, that's x squared, plus ab, that's x times 6, which is 6x, plus b squared. That's 6 squared, which is 36. And this is equal to 0. So we have two cases here. We have x minus 6 to be equal to 0. Or we have x squared plus 6x plus 36 to be equal to 0. For our first case, x is equal to when i move negative 6 to the right it becomes 6. for our second case we have a quadratic expression which is a is 1 from here because we're going to be using the quadratic formula b is 6 and c is 36. so using a quadratic formula of negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a we're going to be substituting so we have x to be equal to negative b b is 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared that's 6 squared minus 4ac a is 1 and c is 36 all over 2a a is 1 so x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus we have the square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 times 36 is 144 all over 2 times 1 is 2 i believe this is similar to what we have on our previous solving so we have uh, negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 108. That's the subtraction of 36 minus 144 all over 2, which results into negative 6 plus or minus. Now we have 6 
root 3i because that's the square root of negative 108 all over 2 and this simplifies into x to be equal to negative 3 plus or minus 3 root 3i as we did on our previous slide so we have four complex solutions and two real solutions therefore making six solutions for x well feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos and like i always say until next time take care